Hello, my name is Ewan, and today I'll be showing you how to make custom entity models using Optifine. The first thing I'll show you how to do is set up a basic resource pack with a simple custom entity model. From there, we'll go on to making randomized entity models based on biome, name, or just completely random. And then after that, we'll go on to animating the entity models using custom animations. So the first thing you'll need to do is set up a new resource pack. So we can do that by going to the .micro folder. If you open a new file explorer window, and then in the top bar type percent, app data percent, and this will take us to our app data roaming folder. From here, you'll have a folder named .micro, and then a folder called resource packs. Inside here, this is where you put your resource packs. So we can make a new folder, and then this will be the name that is displayed in the game for the resource pack. So I'm just going to call it test pack, and then open the folder. Inside here, we need a pack.mc meta file, which is what tells the game that this is a valid resource pack, what version of the game it's for, and also gives it a description. We can make that by going new and then text document, and then naming it pack.mc meta. One important thing to make note here is that this file is a .txt file, not a .mc meta file, and we need to fix that. For some people, you might have file name extensions disabled by default, so you won't actually see that. So in Windows 11, you can enable that by going to view, show, file name extensions. And in Windows 10, there'll be a tab along the top that says view. You click on that, and then there'll be a tick box around here somewhere that says file name extensions. So then you just turn that on to enable that. You can then just rename the file again. F2 is a shortcut that will rename the file, and then delete the .txt extension. It will ask you if you want to rename it. You click yes, and there you go. There's your pack.mc meta. So inside here, if we open that in a text editor, you want to put two curly brackets, one open, one closed, and inside those, you can enter down, and then inside two double quotation marks, you write the word pack. After that, you have a colon, a space, and then two more curly brackets, and then you can enter again. And then the first thing in here is the description. And then this will be the description of the pack. So just like a test pack by you. And that will show us the description in game of the pack. The next thing we need is the pack format. And this is what tells the game what versions of Minecraft this pack is valid for. So 1.19 isn't actually out yet. So I'm going to do this for 1.18. And 1.18's pack format is 8. Just like that. And then you can save the file, and that's all you need to do for this. If you don't know what your pack format number is, an easy way to find out, if you just search pack format Minecraft on Google, and then you'll have the Minecraft wiki, tutorials creating a resource pack. You can go to here, and then you scroll down, and then you have all the pack format numbers here. There you go. 8 is for version 1.18.x, and as you can see here, 9 will be for 1.19. So that's an easy way to find your pack format number. Okay, so then inside the resource pack, you want to make another new file folder, and that's called assets. And inside of there, we're going to make a folder called Minecraft. And inside there, we're going to make a folder called Optifine. And then finally, inside of this Optifine folder, we're going to make an one last folder called CEM. It stands for Custom Entity Model. But then inside this folder, this is where we're going to put our entity models. So let's open the game and see if this resource pack appears. It has nothing in it yet, but it still should appear in game. Okay, so when we're in game, we can go to Options, Resource Packs, and then we see Test Pack and Pack by Ewan. So we can enable that pack. It doesn't do anything yet, but we now have it enabled. This is my entity testing world. Uh, there will be a download to it in the description if you want to use it as well. Let's turn off these shaders. There you go. Yeah, this world is a world just full of every single entity, which makes it really good for testing entity models. So we'll be using this. Okay, let's start by just changing the model of, let's say, the creeper. So to get started, we're going to use a program called Blockbench, and we're going to need a plugin. Now this plugin can be found from File, Plugins, and available, you'll find CEM Template Loader. If it's not at the top, you can just search it. And then you click Install, and you'll get this pop-up telling you something. I'm not going to read it, because I'm going to tell you to use it. Okay, and then from here, you can either access it from the CEM Template Model button here, or you can go to Tools and Load CM Template Model. So just click the button, and then you'll see all these tabs down the side. So the ones that you should normally use are just the supported ones. So these are all the regular models. The unsupported ones here, these are the entities that you cannot change. 
the legacy models are ones for older versions. So the version number that you see here is the last version that that model works in or is made for. So this dragon model for 1.14, it might also work in 1.13 and 1.12 and so on. But the latest one that is for is 1.14. And then any newer one uses the custom, the, the main one in the supported tab. So if we go to the supported tab, we select the creeper. We can load it with the vanilla texture just so we can see it better and click load. And there we go. There's a creeper template. So from here, you'll see that it has the texture on the left. It has the bone structure on the right with all the parts. So yeah, we can now get modeling. Something important that you need to be made aware of is that these bones here, the main ones, the top level ones, these are enforced. You cannot change these or add new ones. If I add a new folder like this, you see it's on the same level as those other ones, that will break the model. It can only have the ones that it's meant for. So for this first simple creeper model, we're just going to duplicate the head with Control D and drag it up just to test the model in game. So from here, we can then file, export, export or define JEM. And we need to find that folder that we made. The resource pack in the resource packs folder, test pack assets Minecraft Optifine CEM, and then it should have a name here by default, creeper.gem. Save. So now if we go to that folder, you see the file here, creeper.gem. If we open it in a text editor, you can see here's the model, here's all the parts, head, body, leg one, it should match up identically to this over here. So now if we go in game, we can test it. An easy way to reload a resource pack in game is by pressing F3 and T. Or if you have like extra buttons on those function keys, you can press function F3 and T and that should do it. Now here you go. You can see the model has changed shape, but something important to note is that the texture is a pink and black missing texture. This can occur for a number of reasons, but the simplest one is that you have a texture defined in your model, but you don't have the actual texture in the CEM folder. If you look in the output log of the game, Please, let me show you how you open that. So if you go to the Minecraft launcher and then go to settings and then open the output log when Minecraft Java Edition starts. If you turn that on, you have to restart the game to get it to occur. But since I already had it enabled, I have the output log right here. So if you look in here, you can see the errors related to the pack. And you see here, failed to load texture, optifine, cem, creeper.png. Now that happened because if we look in the model, we see I've got a creeper.png here. But if we go to the folder, there's no creeper.png here. And there's two ways to fix this. The first way is by actually putting that texture in this folder. We can do that by saving it. It's already set to that path. And then creeper.png, save. If we go back to the folder, you see it's now there. And if we go in game, F3T to reload, the creeper now has the texture. It's all working properly. The other way to fix this would be to let's just delete that texture again. We go back to Blockbench. This time we're going to right click this and delete that. So now there's no texture. We can save it. We go back to the folder and open it in a text edit editor again. You'll see there is no longer a texture defined in here, only a texture size. So we go back in game and reload that. We'll see that it's still working. Now the texture it's using now is actually just the default creeper texture. So if you wanted to edit this, you can do it by editing the location of the default creeper texture. One important thing to note about the creeper is the like charged creeper armor. You can't model that. That's unsupported. It's in the unsupported category if we have a look at that. Tools, unsupported. There you go. Where is it? Creeper charge, unsupported. So you can't change that creeper charge itself. So that's the basic way to remodel an entity. Let's have another example. Classic one with the rabbit into a frog. There are frogs coming in 1.19. I don't care. We're going to do this anyway. So if we just delete that, we don't need this model anymore. We can get rid of the tab, discard. If we go to CM template model again, and then we find rabbit. There we go, load. So here's our rabbit template. The first thing we have to do is delete the ears because Fox don't have the ears like that. We can also delete that. And then from here, we can delete the tail. And then the head, we can duplicate it and add some big eyes. We can delete the texture, delete, and then we go, we can see it better. For the feet, we're going to have the triple feet thing. 
the toes. Let's go back to that bit. With the thing, we can add a group and put this part into that group. We can then center the pivot point with the center pivot button. With the pivot tool, we go back and hold shift and we can go back quarters. Then we can rotate that out. Now that is a bit too short, so I'm going to go back one and then extend it out for one more. There we go. We can now get this burn and we can rename it to that is the right foot, so right, and then it's the right toe again, so right, right toe, I don't know. And then we can duplicate that and then we can just rotate it around to be on the other side. And that is the right left toe. So we can do that for the other foot. We just duplicate it and we drag it over and make sure to switch this to be in the left foot. And then the same for this one. Duplicate it to move it to the left foot. We need to rename these. Did I do that? I forgot to move it over. There we go. So this one is the left right toe. And this one over here is the left left toe. So now we have this. We can create a new template texture by clicking create texture, leave it as template texture, and click confirm. And then we can simply just go to the paint bucket, select our color, and just flood fill for now. So the uh, element will fill the entire cube, and we can just. Now we have a nice green frog. Let's make the toes orange, why not? And we can add some nice yellow eyes. There we go, we can give them a nice happy smile. There you go, there's your happy frog. We can save the texture and we'll call it frog in the Optifine CE importer. Save. And then we can file, export Optifine GEM inside this folder still. We're going to call it rabbit, like it's suggested here, and save. And now when we go in game, F3T, we should have some nice frogs. Look at him go, he loves that. Now you might have noticed in the game, if I go back and look at this frog, you see that the top of the foot is flickering. Now this occurs, it's called Z fighting. This occurs when two textures or two cubes are overlapping. There you go. They're overlapping at the exact same spot. Now there's two ways you can fix this, or three ways you can fix this. One way is by just texturing it the same color, so that you can't actually see it because it's flickering the same color. Another way is to, let me move this back out. Another way is to just offset one of the cubes slightly. So if I move this one down, if I hold control, it'll go a little bit down. There we go. Although you can make that even less if you really wanted to. And the final way is by inflating it slightly. Now inflating it, as you can see, this option here just makes it larger or smaller. So if we inflate it by 0 0.01, it'll go ever so slightly larger. And then it won't z fight anymore because it's above it rather than the same level as it. So that's an easy way to fix those. We can do that for the other one quickly. That one, that one, and that one. You can hold control and click them to select multiple. So 0.01. 0.001. There we go. Let's do that same on that one. 0.001. Even less. So now they're all lined up like that. And they won't defect anymore. Control S to save it. And then in game, F3T to reload it. And as you can see, it's not Z fighting yet. But let's test it again with the removing the texture. So if I delete it from here, you don't need to delete it from this folder. You can just leave it there for now. We need to save it though. Save. And then back in game, we'll see that it instead loads the default frog textures. Frog textures, rabbit textures. So if you wanted different types of frogs, 
you can instead replace the rabbit textures with different colour frogs. And then you'll find that when you spawn them in a game like this, they'll have all their different textures. Okay, the next thing I'm going to show you how to do is make randomised entity models. And by randomised, I mean not like having different frog variants, I mean the shape of the entity model itself. So to do that, let's use... Let's go on the Iron Golem, shall we? So in here again, in Blockbench, we're going to go to Load Entity Template, and we're going to go to the Iron Golem. Load. Okay, and for our variant of the Iron Golem, let's make, what should we make? Let's give him a giant head that's like a Steve head instead, but like massive. So with this head here, we can duplicate it. Let's remove the texture. And we're going to make it massive. You can click these to snap onto an axis. And then we're going to make it 16 wide. It's going to be 16 tall. If we click the X, we go to the side. And it's going to be 16 long. We're going to move it. If we click this forward, we can see where the pivot point is located. It's here. So we want this bit to line up with this. We need to click that. Uh, no, it's that one. And then drag it forwards. Is it three? Or too far? Drag it back. It's this one. Drag it back half. And that's now lined up. Nice. So now, one important thing that I've done is I've kept the other parts of the iron golem still here. So you see, if I hide this, I've still got the head and the nose. That's important. You need to keep every single part because you can't actually randomize the models. All the models need to be one giant model in one. So every single variation that you add, you need to add it to the same model. So one other thing we can do is instead of having his arms long like that, we can have them sticking out in front. So if we duplicate that, we can then bring it up and bring it out in front like that. So he's going to hug you. And then duplicate it and move it over to the other side. And we'll put it in the left arm folder. Now you can see we have our custom parts here, here and here, as well as the base iron golem underneath. From here, if I add the Iron Golem texture back, I need to find the default one. There we go, there's the default Iron Golem again. So on this texture, you can see there's a lot of spare space around it. If we right click, we can go display UV, all faces and all elements. Now we can see every single one. So we can click on the head and we can move it to somewhere that isn't currently taken up. This bit of texture isn't actually there, but we're just gonna we're gonna put this down here, and then this arm here. There's space down here on this right side, so we can put those in the same spot. Why not? And now we need to texture it. So this iron golem texture is the default one. So when the entity model isn't randomized, that's the default one. So we're now gonna make the custom one. So for our custom one, we don't want this arm here or this arm here, because we've made two new arms. We also don't want the nose. That's the custom head, let's hide that. We don't want the nose, and we don't want the head, because we have a new head. So if I save this texture as, we're going to put it in Minecraft, Optifine, we're going to make a new folder called Random, and then another new folder called Entity. And then in this folder, this folder here needs to be an exact mirror of the default Entity folder in a resource pack. So if you have the vanilla assets, like I have in this folder here, let me bring it back up, you'll see entity in the textures folder, and then the random entity folder needs to be an exact mirror of this entity folder, which means that if the like I'm randomizing this iron golem texture here, it needs to be in the exact same location. If you're randomizing a, a villager, and you're randomizing a profession skin, like the armorer, Inside this random entity folder, it would be random entity villager profession armorer. That's where it needs to be. Because we're doing the iron golem. Where is that again? There. It needs to be entity iron golem, optifine random entity iron golem folder. 
and then in there we need to call it angolum hue.png because every single random texture needs to be a variant and it starts at two and counts up from there. So if we add another variant, it'll be angolum three, then angolum four, then angolum five. So now we can click save. And then we can go to that folder. So assets, Minecraft, Optifine, random entity, Angolum. And then we have the texture here. If I edit that in the texture editor, it'll be a lot faster to remove the head, the nose, the arm, and the other arm. And also this random bit that's not even used. And then save that. And then back in Blockbench, you can now see it's got no arms or head. So now if I unhide the custom head we made, we can now start texturing it with our new head and arms for our variant. There we go. If we want this one to be mirrored, we can put it in a subfolder and just call it like mirrored or something. And then we can click the star here. If you don't have those, you can enable it here. And on the folder, click the star and it will mirror the texture. So it's on the other side. There we go. So now we have made this demon. We can click save and then we can file, export Optifine JEM and then in the Optifine CEM folder again, iron save. So you should have, that's the wrong folder, you should have your random texture in Optifine random entity iron golem, iron 2.png. And then in Optifine CEM, you have your model here. If we go back in game and reload it. You'll see that the model has loaded, but the texture is broken again. And that is because we forgot to remove the texture before saving it. Now we go back in game. You'll see it's a default iron golem, but if we go outside, there's a flying pig. And we summon an iron golem if we summon enough of them. Some of them are randomized because they're random. That's what random does, it randomizes. So now we have these terrifying beasts. Look at them again. He's coming for a big hug. We want to put one of them up against a ravager. See what he does. Is he going to attack or not? We're not going to see him attack. Come on. So we can go There we go. Oh, they go right back. Anyway, that's the randomized model. Let's just get rid of all the other entities by killing them all. Goodbye. So now we have a randomized thing. And if let's do another variant, for example. So if we want a, one of the giant ones to have a nose, we can add a nose. Nice big nose on this one. We can put the UV, uh, let's put it down in this gap here. We can then go back to the random entity folder, Optifine random entity iron golem. We'll copy paste this one and call it iron golem three. And then we go back to Blockbench and we can add this texture in so we can then edit it. There we go, it's got a nose now. But on this one, for example, let's not have these arms, let's have a third set of arms. Now this third set will have him looking up, not looking up, reaching up into the sky like he's celebrating. So then for these, we want to move these textures into a new spot again. And we can then color those. And if we add this to the mirrored folder, it should be flipped. If it doesn't flip, just click the star next to it. There we go. And now we need to remove these two arms from this texture. We can do that quickly in a texture editor. And now you'll see that he's reaching up in the air and he has a nose. So now when we save this, remember to delete the texture first, save it, go back to Minecraft, reload. You see, there we go, this one here has randomized to have that new one. If we go outside and we start summoning a bunch of iron golems, you see it's now randomized between all three of those variants we decided. 
So you have to remember that all the parts are still here, you just can't see them because they're invisible, because they have no texture. Okay, what I'm going to show you now is how to do it name based, or biome based, or anything else. Because at the moment it's completely random, like you might want one of them to appear more often than the other, or when you summon them with a custom name, or anything like that, so I'm going to show you how to do that. So, if we go back to the Iron Golem folder, in here you want to make a new text document, and you want to call it Iron Score Golem dot Properties. And yes, we want to change the file name. Remember, make sure this isn't a txt file, make sure it's called Properties. In this file needs to have the exact same name as the default texture that you're randomizing. So because I want to randomize the Optifine, not the Optifine, the Iron Golem texture, it's called Iron Golem Properties. So then inside here, I'm going to put skins.1 equals 2. Save. Then we're going to do name.1 equals James, and then save. Now what this does is this is a property, and then this is the ID of the property, and then this is another property, and this is the ID. And because the IDs of this one and this one are the same, it means that they're linked to each other. So for this one, the skins is 2, and 2 refers to Iron Golem 2.png. So then we're making it so that the name to make this appear has to be James. And then for the Iron Golem 3.png, but add skins dot two equals three. Number three refers to Iron Golem three dot PNG, and then we can go name dot two equals a bob, and then we'll save it. So now if we go back in game, you should see that all the Iron Golems are back to looking normal. However, if we summon one. We now have this version. And it looks terrifying. And we can just keep summoning those, and they'll always have that variant because they always have the same name. If we do the same for the other one, call it Bob, you'll see it has the third variant that we made. If we want to randomize them while they're named James, for example, we can go skins.1 equals 1 space 2. And what this means is that when it's named James, it's going to randomize between texture 1 and 2. 1 refers to the default texture, and 2 refers to this custom texture, and it's just going to do them 50 50%. We'll see that the ones named James, they go James, 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 that's not a James. But they were 50-50% between the randomized one and the custom one. If we want to change that, we can add weights.1 equals, and this here is the weights. So if we add 25-75, this means that skin 2 will have a 75% chance, and skin 1 has a 75% chance. This can also be simplified down to 1 and 3. It's the same thing, just smaller numbers. And now if we go into a blank space, we should see that if I summon, 75% of them should be the custom one, and 25% should be the default one. Looks like it's worked. But there are a bunch of different things you can do to customize how these spawn. You can find them all if you go to the Optifine doc, Optifine documentation. If you go to random entities properties, you'll find them all here. So you see weights is what you just did. Biomes, you can control the biomes, you need to put the biome like name ID. The heights is like a range of heights that it can spawn at. There's loads. There's the name. Professions for villagers. Colors for sheep and cat colors and stuff. If the mob is a baby or not, you can randomize the texture, so on. There's loads of stuff you can do. Now, one important thing to note, this happens top down. So whatever the first thing in here to occur is, it will always do that first. 
So if I name, if I give an example of doing, let's change this to skins of two, and then this one to skins dot three, and add another one before. So if I add skins dot two equals one, two, three, what this what this one does is this just randomizes between one, two, and three, all like thirty three point three recurring percent. But because this happens first, and this one always succeeds. Because there's no other, there's no requirements for it. It always succeeds. That needs to be skins dot one, not skins dot two. It means that this one and this one will never occur because this one wins. It happens first. So if we reload in game, we'll see they're all randomized. And if I test it by summoning one named Bob, you'll see that it no longer applies the Bob one. It's just randomized because the randomized one happens first. So if you ever have randomized ones like this, always put that at the end so that other things can happen first and also update the numbers so that it comes last. And there you'll see now these ones are working again and any that are spawned without a name, let me get rid of that bit, will just be randomized. So there we go, that's how you do random entity models. So now we're going to go on to how to animate entity models. So to do that, we're going to go back to the creeper and we're going to animate this one. So if we load this creeper model back up and then delete that. So animations in Optifine entities are expression based. You can't do keyframes, they're all expression based, which is like a mathematical calculation. So for the in block bench, if you have the CEM template loader, plugin installed, there is an animation editor built into it. So you can open that by clicking the up arrow here and you'll find the animation editor here. So animations go on each body part individually. Each one can have its own set of animations. It doesn't really matter though. You can put them all in the same one, which is what I'm going to do here. What I'm going to do for this creeper is I'm going to change it into a centipede creeper. It's going to be long like that and have lots of legs and they're all going to move. An important thing to note is that we cannot move these pivot points. So what I'm going to do is put everything inside this body folder. First thing we need is to have the head in there, so duplicate that and move the head, and then this head can be located over here somewhere. And then the body, we can add a new group and we'll rotate the, let's just call it rotate. And then we can center the pivot on that and rotate it, so it's now long. Move it down. And now we can extend it. We can actually delete this head folder, not head folder, head cube, but keep the folder. If you delete the folder, it will load, the game will still load it, but because the game is loading it, it will have the default head in it. But because we have it in the model empty, it won't load anything, so you won't be able to see it. So just always leave them empty, unless you don't need to edit it at all, then you can just remove it, and it will load the default one in game instead. So now what we need to do is these legs, we're going to Duplicate them and put them into the body. We can delete these parts and then just work off this one leg. Let's just call this new leg zero. And then this one is going to go back and let's fix the pivot point to be above it so that when it rotates, it will rotate around that pivot point. So now we can just duplicate this leg a bunch. There we go. So now we have our Reaper centipede. Let's move the head to like a more logical position. There we go. So now if we rotate the head, we'll see it looks around like that. So now we can try this in game. It needs a texture first. So we can create a new template texture. Confirm. There we go. We can give him some eyes. And then we'll save it in here as just Reaper. PNG. And then we export the model. File export Optifine gem. Creeper.png mm -hmm. save. Replace it, yes. We'll see our model works, but of course it has no animations yet because we haven't actually added any animations. So we're going to do that now. So if we select the head, we'll see an editing, editing animations for part body because that's the main folder here. What you've got to do in here is you can end it down. And then the first thing you need to do is add quotation marks like that, and then the name of the part that you want to animate. So in this case, I'm going to animate head two. So in here, we can add head two, and then we want the head, we're going to animate it rotating 
around the red axis, which is the x axis. So dot rotate alpha rotate x for axis x. So this I will animate head two rotating around the x axis. You can then add colon and then more quotation marks. And then this bit in here is the actual animation itself. So you see if I put one, play all, and there we go. So then on head two, you see it's rotating one. And that's because the angle is not in degrees, it's in radians, which are a lot larger than degrees. So we want this to look up and down when the creeper looks up and down. So if you click this button called documentation here and go to the documentation page, you'll find a full list of all the things that you can use to make animations. So if we look inside render parameters, there's head yaw and head pitch. The head yaw is the entity's head's y rotation and the head pitch is the entity's head's x rotation. As you see here, we're animating around the x-axis, so we want head pitch. And then we can click play all, and now we can see that it's added a slider down here called head pitch. So we can now move that, and you see it goes crazy. And that is because I think this is in radians and we need or degrees and we need it in radians. So if we add T O R A B the two radians, if you look in the documentation, you'll see inside of the functions T O R A D two red two radians converts degrees to radians. So we put head pitch and then we play and now it should there we go, that's a lot smoother. He's nodding. So now we can save that and we'll try it in game. And now it should be able to look around. It might look up and down. There we go, yep, he looked up. He can't look side to side yet. So we can add that now. If we just copy paste this line, add a comma at the end of the previous line. So every line must have a comma except the last one. And this will be rotating around Y, and this was head your. We click play. We can now control both of them. Can just save that, stop the animations, and try that in game. You'll see that he can now look around all the way. Go and look at me. There we go. So now we need to make his legs actually move. Now, if you click on the documentation thing again and go to examples, you see the first thing here is a walking animation example. So if we copy that and we'll paste that after this. And this is left leg at the moment, but we need to make it, you see down here, unknown group left leg. We need to make this to one of our legs. So new leg zero is our first one. And you'll see here, sine limb swing times x times limb speed times y. If we go look at the documentation, it says here, in this example, x is a multiplier to control how fast the leg swings, and y is a multiplier to control how far the leg swings. And if we look inside documentation, you'll see that Sine is a sine of x, and that's that's sine is a sine wave basically, so it's just a wave that goes up and down or back and forth. So inside here, we can delete the x and y for now, we're not going to use them. So if we click play and we uh, turn on limb swing and we increase limb speed, we should see that that leg is now swinging back and forth. Now if we add back the y and x, you'll see it doesn't actually work because y and x are invalid, but these need to be a number. So times 1 will be the default. But now if we do times 2, we'll see it goes twice as fast. Times 4, 4 times as fast. We set that back to 1 and we do this one, times 2, it now goes twice as far. If we go times 4, it's now 4 times as far. So that's how you can control how much that walk animation moves by. I'm just going to remove these and not use them. That limb speed can go all the way up and it goes nice and fast. So now we need to have this animation for all the other legs. And there are 10 legs in total. So there we go, now I've animated all the legs. If we click play, they all move at the same time. 
which is not what we want. We want them to alternate. And you can alternate, alternate them easily if you just add a minus sign in front. It means it goes the other way. It inverts it, makes it negative. So we can do this for all of them like this. And there you go, now those back ones are proper. And then it should be those two. And then the last one. And again, now all the legs move properly. So now if we save this and go in game, you see that when he walks, don't want to walk, there you go, his legs swing. If we wanted to add, let's say, an idle animation, like if we give him some wings, and we're going to make those wings flap all the time, There's one wing, we need the other wing just duplicated, and then we need folders. And then set the pivot points for these, we can go above. And then that's the front there, so where's the, I can't even see it. There it is, so that should go there. And then same for the left wing. So now when you rotate this, it should rotate around that point. Then we need to animate those. So now we can go down here and then left underscore wing dot r y because we're rotating around the actually no that's the z axis. Oh, because we put it in the rotate folder, that's why. Okay, in this case it's the z axis. So just dot r z. And then for this one we're gonna do sign. And then if we look at the documentation we'll see that there's time, the current world time in ticks, and also age, how long the entity has existed in the world in ticks. So if we do time for now, that's just a constant number that gets larger and larger, which is perfect for making this kind of thing. So now if we click play, we we'll see it swings back and forth kind of fast. We add that for the other wing as well. Click play. You see they both go at the same time, so we can invert one of them. And now they both go opposite directions. Now they're both going at too far. So in front of this one, we can add two red, two radians, and then 45 degrees plus. And then we can do the same on this one. Although on this one, we want minus 45. And there we go. Now this time, this sign time is going too far and too fast. So to slow it down, we can divide time by two, and it's going slower, and then to change the distance, we can divide the entire sine wave by two, and that doesn't go as far. So even if I stop the limb swing and stop the limb speed, you can see it's still flapping and it's gonna flap all the time. You can save the texture, let's create a PNG again. Save the model, go in game, and we'll see that it's now flapping. Now, if we go back to the Iron Golem, I'll show you how you can copy default animations. So let's make a new Iron Golem. So we need to load this. Let's remove all the other stuff. Let's not remove it, let's just rename it so we don't delete it. That means it just won't load because it's not in the right spot anymore. So now with this one, we're gonna make our own arms and we're gonna animate them as well. So with these arms, we're gonna move them to the body folder. It looks the same, but if we try it in game, we don't want the texture. Delete the texture. Rename that model so we don't lose it. Save that. If we try it in game, you'll see it should look identical to the iron golem. However, when I punch it, only its legs move because its arms are no longer in the arm folders. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up these arms to be copying the default arm movements. So you can do that by making new arm folders. We can set up the pivot points for these. Yep, that's the same. So now these have 
working photos with pivot points. So what I want to do instead on the body is add two animations. Left, it's not left arm, it's arm left. And we're going to animate it around the Z axis. And it's going to copy the default left arm, which is left arm. And it's going to copy the movement of it rotating around the X axis. And we're going to do the same for the right arm. Now if I click play, nothing will happen in block bench, but if you go to the left arm and I rotate it around the x-axis, and then click play, you'll see that moves up. If I rotate it back, you can see they're rotating here. I click play, it now rotates the other way. So let's set that back to zero, and save the model, and go in game and see what happens. So now when I punch it, he animates like that. There we go, perfect. So let's see what happens. That is a lot of angles. Let's see what happens if he punches something. So slash summon, bang bottom, and let's slash summon a ravager. There you go, he now puts his arm on the other side of it. But they're both going the same way. We can inverse one of them with just a minus. Save that. And there we go, now get another ravager. His arms swing right out every single time he attacks. It's like he's doing star jumps. So that is how you copy animations. And the benefit of copying animations is if I change this to be on the x-axis instead, so they rotate normally, I can move these arms around, and they should still work correctly. So if I put the arm here, for example, You see his arms are down there, but they still rotate correctly. So when he's fighting a Ravager, his arms are now swinging from all the way down there, which looks kind of funny. But that is how you move the uh, arms and stuff around if they, if you want them in a different spot. The final thing I'm going to show you how to use is if statements in animations. So for this, let's use the pig, why not? And let's make a body of water. So it's going to fill this with water. And what, I, what I'm going to do here is when the pig is in water, it's going to have a rubber ring around it. If I load up a new pig model, and then if I go to the body, I can add a new cube. Now you see this, cube, this, this pig has a cube around it, which could be a rubber ring. So let's name that ring. So as you can see here, this texture does not have enough space for it. So there's two ways we could fix this. We could make, we could just edit this texture to be larger and then change the texture size in here to be larger. Or we could make it so that this ring uses a separate texture. So I'm going to show you both of these options. So let's save this pig texture to the Optifine folder. Save. Let's go and edit that. We can then crop it to be 64 by 64 instead. Go back in here, update this to be 64 by 64. Confirm. And now we can move this down here to have loads more room. And now we can paint fill this. Let's pick a orange color. Let's texture this nicely, shall we? Let's pick a, a bit of a darker orange. Let me clear this color palette, load palette blank. And then let me just add a plugin that I'm making. This plugin isn't available yet, but it should be in a couple days. So if you're watching this a while after this video is released, this plugin should be available. Color gradient generator. You can then click on generate color palette. We're going to have uh, nine colors with an angle of 45. Uh, create. And there we go, there's some colors. And there we go, there's our pig and a rubber ring. So if we save this texture, we can save this model as pig. Try it in game. We should have a ring, but at the moment we haven't animated it yet. So this ring will be there all the time. There we go. 
So now, if we click on body, you will see that this pig has a default animation of this.rx to zero. Now this animation is required for this pig model because the pig behaves in a weird way where the body is actually upright as you can see by this texture. So inside Blockbench, what I've done with these templates is they have a default rotation. So make them look correct in the editor. And then this animation makes it so that it's actually correct in game. So if you ever see when you load a template an animation like this, you can just ignore it. Just leave it there and it won't break anything. The only thing you need to do is when you click play, you'll see the body flips up, but then there's this button here, which you can enable by toggle more options, which will say disable this group rotating or playing animations. You can turn that on and then it will just ignore any rotations applied. So that when you click play, nothing happens to it. So it displays correctly in Blockbench. So now we need to animate this ring so it only shows up in the water. Let me just center that pivot point on it there again. If we look at the documentation, we'll see down here the if statement. So that means if condition value, condition two, value two, so on, and then value else. If we look in the examples, there's an example on if statement up here. Yep. See if is on the ground, on if not is on the ground. It rotates 45 degrees, otherwise it says at zero. These are some animations. You can read this if you want to know more about it. So for this one, we're going to add an animation for ring. And for this ring, we want to hide it. And there's two ways you can hide it. If we look here, you'll see the variable names. We can scale along the X axis, Y axis, and Z axis. So we're going to do scaling. So ring dot R s no rs uh, sx for ring scaling along the x-axis and if we just set that at zero you'll see that when i click play it completely flattens itself so what i'm going to do here is add two quotation marks and then if and then if we look at the documentation again you'll see in the entity parameters there is is in water if the entity is touching water so if it is in water, and then add a comma, and then this is what happens if it is in the water. So if it is in the water, we don't want anything to happen to the ring. It stays at 1. Scale 1 is default. So then if it isn't in water, which is what happens after, this is the else statement. So if this, do this, otherwise do this. If it isn't in the water, we want to scale it to 0. So now we click play, you see it's scaled to zero, and if I tick on is in water, it goes back out. So we can add this for the z axis, or the y axis instead. And if we do that now, we should see it completely disappears. It is actually inside the pig, and it is one long 2D plane. So you can do it on all three axes uh, x, y, and z. And now it just goes to a single point, but you can't even see it when it's with only two. So you might as well only do two. There we go. And we save that and we go in game and let's try it out. So we spawn a pig on the side. He's got no ring. He's walking away. He does not want to go in the water. Let's try a different pig. We punch him in and he gets a ring. And he gets out and he's no longer got a ring. This guy's got a ring, but he wants to get out. Why do all the pigs hate the water? Let's put a bunch in here, shall we? So they all have rings. Now I said before there are two ways to get rid of this ring. The other way is by just moving it really far away. If I do ring dot tx for translate along the x-axis, if you look at the documentation there here, translate along the x-axis. If it is in water, it goes to 1, otherwise it stays at 0. If I press play, there we go, you see it's now moving. So if I make this number massive, this first one has to be 0, this second one is moving it when it's not in water. So if I make this massive, then it just moves really far away when it's not in water. That's another way of doing it. Let's go back to the other one. The other one was cleaner. There you go. So, anyway, back to what I said before. There are two ways of doing this texture. This is the expanding one, which is 
good because it's just one texture is nice and easy to do, but uh, you might not want to do that. So the other way of doing it is if I edit this texture to be just the ring, we can see that it's broken in here again. We can just change this back to 64 by 32. And this pig looks broken, but if I bring up the default assets and add the pig texture back in, you see that the pig looks correct and the ring looks correct when I move it into the right position. There we go. The ring is correct when the ring is loaded and the pig is correct when the pig is loaded. So what we can do now is delete both of those, save this. If I go in game, it's going to look broken because it's only loading the vanilla texture at the moment. But what we can do is inside the model in a text editor, if I find pig and open it in here, what you can do is you can find the folder, here you go, ring, and you can add texture and add a comma at the end. And then this is just going to be pig.png, which will load this texture here, which is the ring texture. So now we try and game. You see they now have the ring and it hides again. So now that part is using a separate texture. If this texture was also a different size, then you just add the texture size thing to it as well, like that. With like the different size, so 64 by 64. But yeah, that's how you can use multiple textures. Blockbench doesn't support it, but you can do it manually. And once you've done it, let me close Blockbench. Once you've added it once, if you try to open it in Blockbench, You'll see you can't actually see it, but if you save the model, it shouldn't get removed. There you go. It, it moved around, but it's still there. So Blockbench won't remove it, but you can't change it in Blockbench. So there we go. That is lots of different things about OptiFinancy models and how to use them. I hope that helped. If you need any help, there are links in the description to my Discord server, or you could go to the Blockbench Discord server and ask there. But, or the Optifine server and ask in there as well in the resource packs channel. There's lots of different places you can find help if you have issues. Anyway, thanks for watching. Goodbye.